Hola! <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Greetings and welcome. Well, uh, this is a closer look that uh, is long overdue. I, I should have done this one ages ago. And, well, now definitely seems like the right time. I'm, of course, talking about Twin Peaks. Yes, because we uh, finally got... A new series of Twin Peaks, literally 27 years after the original series ended. Um, I am so stoked. This is actually one of my favorite TV shows of all time. I've rewatched it countless times over the years. Um, I actually started watching it back when it originally premiered. Yes, the actual original premiere night when they showed the pilot movie as a movie of the week, and then they showed the first... Uh, uh, regular episode of the series, I think, the next day. Um, then I missed episode three, <laughs> which, uh, funny enough, is the most important episode of the first season because it's the one where Cooper has his famous uh, dream when we first see the Red Room and the man from the, another place and all that uh, good stuff, which becomes so important in the series uh, later on. Um, yeah, I did eventually see it, obviously, but... Uh, yeah, I've owned it on uh, Laserdisc. I actually had the, the big box sets. you got to understand, with Laserdisc, this was before the days of DVD, before the days of complete series sets and season sets and whatnot. So it was very rare to get a complete series collection on Laserdisc. Uh, but Twin Peaks was one of those big notable shows that just got the deluxe treatment. It was put up by Image Entertainment. Um, now they put out the series as four box sets because with Laserdisc you'd only fit like an hour per side. So basically, each box set would have like eight episodes in it. And to, to kind of put things, put things in perspective as to how things have changed cost-wise, each one of those eight-episode box sets was about 200 bucks. Yeah, so you'd pay about $800 to get the entire series, and I did. Um, and then you had to get the pilot movie separately because it wasn't, uh, it, there was some kind of licensing issue. They couldn't include it. Um, so the pilot movie was only available in its uh, extended theatrical form, which was shown over in Europe, uh, which has an alternate ending. Which, funny enough, the, the alternate ending is actually an extended version of Cooper's dream sequence, which appeared in episode three of the regular series. Um, so that was the only way you could get the pilot for a long time. And then, of course, the Fire Walk With Me uh, movie as well. Uh, now, these Laserdisc sets were only bare bones. It was strictly the episodes and nothing else. Um, but, I mean, I was happy to have it, just to have it in what was, at the time, just the best quality going. Um, and being something of an obsessive fan of the show, I was more than happy to shell out what amounted to almost a thousand dollars just to get all of the episodes. Now, to put that in perspective, when they put out the Gold Box uh, complete series set, I think this was about 60 bucks when it originally came out. So, sixty dollars. So, like... A little over a quarter of what one of those eight episode box sets cost for the complete series and a pile of extras so pretty cool and then of course we got the blu-ray set uh, a little more recently uh, this goes for about a hundred well here in Canada it goes for about 120 so still again about a little over half the cost of one of those eight episode laserdisc sets so, without any further ado, by the way, uh, this t-shirt here, this is actually an original Twin Peaks t-shirt from 1990. Um, yeah, this is circa 19, this is, this is like the real deal here. This is from when the original show was on. Here, a closer look at my shirt. As you can see, copyright 1990. Oh yeah, kicking it old school. It's the real deal, folks. Um, it's been well loved over the years. You may notice the black is a little faded from, you know, being 27 years old. But uh, no holes. Yeah, this is quality merchandise. It was good, good stuff. You know, very happy with it. Alrighty, so without any further ado, um, welcome to the Twin Peaks DVD and Blu-ray uh, Complete Series Sets Closer Look today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. So I guess just a little bit more background information. I remember when the original pilot movie 
aired. Um, I had a girlfriend at the time, my first girlfriend. I was 18. Um, yeah, that was a terrible relationship. That was a mistake from day one. But hey, I was young and stupid, so what can I say? Um, so, <laughs> uh, she was not a big cinephile like I was, so I, I remember many conversations trying to explain the whole world of film to her, and, uh, Twin Peaks was one of them, uh, so I gave her a call, I was really excited, like, I'd never seen anything like it before, I didn't know anything about David Lynch at this point, um, I had seen, uh, Dune and The Elephant Man many years earlier, but, uh, I, I didn't know at the time that they were by the same guy, um, as Twin Peaks, so anyway, I gave her a call after the, the movie aired. I was like, did you see it? Did you see it? It's like, what? Did you, did you watch Twin Peaks? Yeah, I did. It's like, oh, cool. What did you think? I was just, I, I was like gushing. I was just dying to talk to somebody about it. This is, of course, long before the internet, so I couldn't just go online and talk with a bunch of strangers about it. I had to talk to people you actually knew. And so I, met, I phoned her, and uh, yes, the telephone, an actual corded telephone. <laughs> it was touch tone though. I wasn't completely living in the dark ages. It wasn't a dial, uh, rotary dial phone. Uh, so yeah, so did you see it? Did you see it? It's like, yeah, so what do you think? It's like, it was kind of stupid. I'm like, it's like dead silence in response. Like, what, 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 what do you mean? Like trying to contain my confusion and just uh, press a little further. So well, what do you mean? Well, they didn't even solve who did the murder. Like they didn't solve the mystery. I said, well, no, of course not. It's it's the first episode. Oh, it's a series. Yes, it's it's a series. There gets more. They're doing more. Okay, I didn't know it was a series. I thought it was just. A, but it's like that. I mean, it, it may seem like an innocent enough mistake, but um, it was very clear in all the advertising that this was a series. This is the pilot movie of a series. It was not a standalone. Uh, but I mean, that was just a small example of the sort of dumb assery I had to put up with. She was not the, the sharpest crayon in the box, but, uh, Hey, as long as you're happy, right? Uh, <laughs> anyway, anecdote time over. Let's head on down to the black box and check out both sets, the Twin Peaks gold box DVD set and the entire mystery Blu-ray set. All right, so we'll start off with the definitive gold box edition. Look at that. That is beautiful. I remember when this came out. It actually came out the same week that uh, Shout Factory re-released the complete series of My So-Called Life. So it was like the, the cult classic TV shows of incredible quality week. <laughs> Let's give you a look at the, the spines there. And it's even on the top. And on the bottom, we just have our indicia there. On the back, there's actually no uh, paper on the back. I searched through all my backings, thinking, where is the backing for it? I didn't even think to look at the back of the box. So the back of the box actually just has everything listed right there. Let's uh, let's actually zoom in on that, and we'll get a closer look at the, uh, the contents there, just so you can read it for yourself. There we go. Extreme close-up. Got to love it. Uh, now, this was a pretty big deal here, the fact that it was all 29 original episodes, including the original pilot, because there were uh, some DVD releases prior to this set. Uh, specifically, there was a Season 1 set, and then literally years later, we got the Season 2 set. and then, uh, uh, But we still didn't have the pilot episode. <laughs> Again, some kind of rights issues. So the pilot episode remained in limbo for a little bit, and then there was a region-free, uh, I think... UK release that came out that had the original broadcast version of the pilot episode for the first time ever on home video. So they'd somehow managed to work things out so they could do a, an indiv individual release and they did it region free so that uh, if you were outside of the UK you could still uh, get it. I don't know if it was PAL or NTSC though. Uh, may have been PAL format so still not quite the perfect presentation. But um, as you can see, I mean, tons of extras on here. Um, like you've got, uh, I'm reading this upside down, so you've got, uh, uh, this is really small, hold on. So yeah, so you got uh, brilliantly remastered picture. So um, yeah, not bad, actually. I mean, at the time, this was the best quality you could get. Uh, you got a whole bunch of deleted scenes, which is always lots of fun. 
Uh, Secrets from Another Place documentary. A Slice of Lynch. This one is really good. It's basically a, a sit-down sort of dinner conversation with uh, David Lynch, Kyle MacLachlan, and Megan uh, Amik, um, who uh, played Shelley. And uh, just really, really wonderful. We'll talk a little bit more about that in uh, a few minutes here. Return to Twin Peaks. Well, you can see. I mean, they got all kinds of cool stuff. You can track the map of the town. You've got, um, for, for some of the... Um, uh, repeat showings in later years, uh, they actually got Catherine Coulson, who played the log lady, to do new introductions to every single episode. So that's pretty cool. So those um, are included. Uh, and you have the option to watch it with or without the log lady introduction. So it's kind of nice that they have those. Saturday Night Live. I actually have this. I, um, I recorded this when it originally aired. Uh, the Saturday Night Live episode uh, hosted by Kyle MacLachlan. Uh, there's a hilarious Twin Peaks parody in that, uh, which features Phil Hartman as Leland Palmer, um, Chris Farley as Leo Johnson, and uh, oh, it's just so, some of the, like, if you were a fan of Saturday Night Live in the 90s, um, it's just a treasure trove of people that you know from that. <laughs> from, from that. And uh, Kyle McLaughlin, of course, is Dale Cooper. Uh, it also includes his monologue, which is absolutely hilarious, where he sort of jokingly blows the solution to the Laura Palmer m mystery. Don't worry, no actual spoilers there. It's it's just a joke. Who he says did it didn't actually do it. Oh, that might be a spoiler, too. But uh, And then all kinds of stuff. You got uh, the music video for Falling. Gotta love Julie Cruz. She's so beautiful and talented. And uh, and I'll whole bunch of other goodies uh there's some extras on here like some easter eggs as well for example there's an easter egg featuring the man from another place uh giving you uh lessons on how to speak backwards like the way that they speak in the black lodge so that's pretty cool too so all kinds of really good uh really good uh goodies <laughs> good goodies goodies of the goodness persuasion um to check out there so an absolute treasure trove of stuff um now, one of the big things was... Uh, now, this did not include the movie, Fire Walk With Me. And uh, the only deleted scenes you get here are from the TV series. Now, at the time when this came out, uh, it, it was known that there was a ton of deleted scenes for Fire Walk With Me, especially ones featuring characters that did not... Uh, you know, that were in the series, but didn't... You know, their appearances in the movie got cut. Um, but David Lynch was very adamant that if they were going to present the deleted scenes from Fire Walk With Me, he wanted them to be fully remastered from the original film elements and cleaned up and polished and presented in the best possible way uh, they could. So for the long to longest time, all we had was this gold box and there was no uh, nothing for Fire Walk With Me. So, uh, we, so those uh, deleted scenes kind of remained an enigma for a very, very long time. All right, so let's open this bad boy up and we'll uh, take a look inside. We'll get back to the fire walk with me stuff in a little bit here so it's basically just a big uh sort of book with uh the discs and uh just you know fairly straightforward uh box still has the security sticker in there yeah good luck getting that out <coughs> rip shred tear yeah no we're just gonna leave that where it is um so yeah basically very very nice uh box and then sorry didn't mean to hit the mic there and then if we uh open this up and take a look inside we actually do have some goodies there. Oh, I have a burned disc. We'll have to see what's on that. <laughs> I bet it's the pilot episode. Um, so there you go. So each uh, each disc has its own sort of page in the book here. Very nice. Uh, really straightforward. It's, uh, yeah, I guess it is different, different artwork on each one. So let's see. So we've got the, uh, just going to turn this around here. So we've got the, uh, the sawmill there. And then we've got the, uh, what is that, is that the gas station? Yeah, it's Big Ed's Gas Farm. Good old Big Ed. And then we have uh, basically the Waterfall and the Great Northern. We've got the, uh, the Double R Diner there, of course. We've got an owl, because, you know, the owls are not what they seem. Oh, and then, of course, we have One-Eyed Jacks. Everyone's favorite whorehouse. The obligatory coffee and donuts. Very nice. Got the... Uh, is that just the... Four? Hold on, I have to get a closer, a closer look for me. Oh, that's... Uh, I know what that is. That's uh, Leo's cabin, actually, there. Where uh, 
you know, some of the stuff during the night of Laura Palmer's murder took place. And then here we have, uh, oh, the Bang Bang Bar, of course, yeah. And then topping it all off, we've got the Red Room. Very cool. So let's take a look at the uh, the inserts here. I bet you anyway. I'm gonna. I'm guessing that this is the pilot movie. Oh, Twin Peaks archive. Oh, I know what this is. This is. Uh, this is. I mentioned how I recorded uh, the Saturday Night Live thing, and I, I recorded a bunch of other stuff as well uh, off of TV at the time. So you won't find this in the official set because this is stuff that I recorded and digitized. <laughs> so basically I, I digitized, uh, all the Twin Peaks goodies from my old VHS tapes to preserve them and then threw them onto a DVD. That's what that is. All right. So I guess we, oh no, of course it's not the pilot movie. We have the pilot movie. I'm an idiot. Never mind. I'm, I'm thinking of the, uh, the old sets. So then here we've got greetings from Twin Peaks. DVD postcards. Now let's take, get a nice close up look at these here. So basically, just uh, kind of like a photo envelope. Very nice. We'll uh, pull these out. Let's uh, let's zoom in a bit, shall we? All right. So there we've got Leo's very shady cabin there, and then on the back, yeah, just standard postcards. Here we've got uh, the giant and Cooper. Set these aside here. Ah, we got everyone's favorite crazy FBI agent, uh, Wyndham Earl himself. Wonderful uh, Canadian actor, Kenneth Welsh, by the way. Fantastic. Always really liked him in basically anything I ever saw him in. We got the man from another place. Very cool. Shelly the Waitress? Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> We've got uh, Annie. Now, you may notice that these are numbered. 56 of 61. So they did 61 cards. You get, uh, I don't know, a dozen or so. So basically, the only way to get a complete set of these cards is if you bought the gold box several times over and just lucked out and happened to get all the cards. That, honestly kind of shitty that they did that like why would they do that why would you like do you realistically expect people to buy the set like 10 times over just to get all the freaking postcards uh then we got donna hayward there of course got the sawmill oh very nice shot of the uh the waterfall and the great northern very cool I'm actually quite quite happy. Oh, there we go, the bird. The very first thing you see in the opening titles of every episode of the original series. Very cool. Got James being moody, <laughs> as usual. Uh, just out kind of staring at the forest. Got his bike there. It's actually a very nice, uh, very nice shot. Some beautiful photography in this series, i got to say. Another shot of the sawmill from the, uh, from the opening title sequence. Very nice. And there you go, a shot from episode three, <laughs> the one I missed, where we learn all about uh, Cooper's obsession with Tibet. And this is when he was doing the throwing rocks at bottles test to sort of get some suspects going. It's uh, very unconventional investigatory methods, but because it was Cooper, we didn't question it because Cooper was just so freaking awesome. All right, so we'll just put all these back in their protective envelope. There we go. Ta-da! Greetings from Twin Peaks. DVD postcards. All right, so we'll just put everything back in. Nice, uh, thick pouch here to, uh, to put everything. Is it just kind of... How does this go in here? Go like that. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I had it the wrong way around. And we'll put my custom DVD-R of Twin Peaks goodies back in there. Very cool. And back into the box we go. Oh, I should I should have shown you the back there. That's the uh, that's the train car. That's where the uh, actual murder took place. So if you've seen the movie Fire Walk with Me. 
uh, or, you know, watched the series. Uh, you kind of get the, the sequence of events there. All right, so now, skipping ahead a, about a decade, let's check out the Blu-ray set, Twin Peaks, The Entire Mystery, and The Missing Pieces. So getting back to what I was saying with uh, Fire Walk With Me, The Extras, that's what that is. So the, the powers that be finally decided to give David Lynch the money he needed to remaster the, the deleted scenes. So we actually have a 91-minute feature featuring all of the deleted scenes from Fire Walk With Me. So Fire Walk With Me on its own is like a 2-hour and 14-minute movie, something like that. It's, like, it's over 2 hours. So with this, Missing Pieces, we get an additional 91 minutes of stuff that we've never seen before. So that was such a treat. I mean, at long last, we could see all of that missing material and see what we've been missing all this time with the missing pieces that we're missing. So basically, we have a, uh, a clear plastic backing. So if we put that on there, so it normally would go on like that. So nothing, uh, you don't see anything on the front. Indicia on the bottom. And then on the back, we actually have... Uh, you know, clear so you can see the picture through the uh, through the backing, and it just kind of lists the the basics there. Um, and this is the the blue rose, which uh, I thought was appropriate for the Blu-ray. <laughs> um, now, of course, in this case, you know, we have the red room design, but it's all in blue because you know Blu-ray, right? Huh? Huh? See, see what they did there? All right. There, just giving the focus a little whack and uh, zooming in a little bit more. So basically, we look on the side here. This is embossed. Uh, hold on a second. There we go. This is embossed, which is quite nice. Just the Twin Peaks uh, logo. And it's all shiny. Nothing on the top. Uh, did I do that? Did I just do that side? I think I just did that side. And then the same thing on the other side. So very nice. Um, so basically, uh, it opens up like this. Now, this is all solid. This is all like, uh, like this is actually cut out here. And then there's uh, the image. So you get the, uh, of course, the homecoming queen picture of Laura there with the uh, the cutout of her corpse kind of matched up. It's kind of trippy and morbid. So be careful when putting this on your shelf because this is a cutout. And I think it would be far too easy to catch things on it. So just be, be careful. But this is nicely textured. you got even like the little rips and such have uh, some embossing to them and the logo's embossed. And uh, it's got some nice uh, sort of, you know, irregular texture to it, which is pretty cool. So this basically opens up like this. And we have, if we take a look here, we've got a, uh, just a nice picture of the uh, mysterious Misty Forest. Very cool. And then uh, you got the ribbon there to kind of keep it like that. So it doesn't open up all the way. Uh, and then inside, we have the actual... Um, like a booklet of uh, of discs, which I'll show you here. And then if we take a look on the bottom, we actually have the amount of dirt and the piece of paper with Fire Walk With Me on it. So that's a nice little extra. So underneath, it's actually glued underneath. So it, but I mean, kind of crappy glue, I guess. It just kind of came off. So the, uh, the Fire Walk With Me note actually goes in there in that little, uh, you know, indentation so it's possible you may have a set with this still glued to the bottom in which case you have this hidden underneath which I thought was kind of cool that they uh, that they did that I'm just gonna very carefully remove that all right and then uh, the dirt there because of course they found that note on the mound of dirt at the crime scene and that became kind of one of the big taglines so the way this works here is it's kind of a flip open thing so we've got the lovely welcome to Twin Peaks picture there and if we open it up, this gives you the uh, the contents of the first two discs, which contain everything from season one. And then on top, you've got the uh, the bird there, so it's very cool. So the uh, the paper or the sheet, it's kind of a plastic, like clear plastic, and uh, or sort of uh, opaque plastic, I guess. And uh, you can lift it up, and then you get the picture underneath, which in this case is the the sawmill. Very nice. And then if you lift this up. Oh, you get a nice picture of the waterfall in the Great Northern. And then inside, the uh, the discs are in these uh, sleeves, the paper sleeves, and uh, pictures underneath. So this is, of course, the beach where Laura Palmer's body was discovered. And there she is, wrapped in plastic. She's dead. 
wrapped in plastic. All right. And we flip it over, and we have Big Ed's Gas Farm. And disc two. I'll just take each one out so you can see the artwork. So we got the, uh, the shot of the, the saw there. Very cool. Yeah, being Blu-ray, I mean, these are nigh-on unscratchable, so I'm not too worried about the paper sleeves, plus the presentation is just so nice. Season 2 was the full season of 22 episodes, so obviously more discs. Uh, season 1 was only 8 episodes, including the pilot. I always include the pilot as episode 1. Some people don't. Some of the DVD sets didn't. But uh, I've always included it as episode 1. So I should mention, just before we get into season 2 here, this, uh, this does include, much like the DVD set, both... Uh, versions of the pilot, uh, which is pretty cool. The main difference, uh, I think, as I, as I mentioned, is the um, um, the international version basically contains the original version of Cooper's Dream, which later appeared in episode three, or in this case, episode two of uh, of the regular series. So, if you want to see, and, and it's funny because in episode four, which follows, um, or episode three as it is on the discs. Um, Cooper is recounting the dream to uh, Sheriff Truman and Lucy, and he mentions a lot of stuff that we did not see in the televised version. However, if you go and watch the international pilot version of the dream, then you'll actually see all of the stuff that he's referring to in that episode. It's kind of funny that they referred to things like that in the show, but we didn't actually see them. So... Um, one thing I was talking about with Skin Slip is uh, a lot of aspects of this show uh, deal with the points of view of characters. So sometimes we may see the same event twice. In particular, if you compare the series of events as shown in Fire Walk With Me versus how they were recounted in Flashback and through the investigation in the series, some fans have said, well, how come there's, there's differences? Like, is, isn't that a conflict of continuity? It's like, no, because the way we're seeing it in the series is in Flashback and through investigation and whatnot. Where, so that's like from that perspective, whereas in Fire Walk With Me, we're actually seeing it as it actually happened, like as it really happened. So that's the difference. And the whole series is full of examples of things like that. Like it's all about point of view. So, um, so in the case of, uh, you know, and Cooper's Dream, I think is a good example of that because uh, we're seeing it kind of from uh, a slightly different perspective when we see it in the movie. Um, I mean, it's all, I guess, from Cooper's perspective, but we're just kind of getting highlights in that. But when we're hearing Cooper recounting it, he's telling us how he remembers it, which is slightly different. So you can say, like, well, the version in the movie is the full dream, or he's misremembering it, because, I mean, he doesn't remember what Laura what whispered to him either. So, yeah, sorry, I, I, this is the kind of show I could talk about for days. There's so much stuff you can go into with this. So let's try to keep it, uh, keep it to uh, the point here. So here's the uh, train tracks. This, of course, is where uh, Ronette Pulaski was discovered um, and where she crossed the state line uh, from Canada into the U.S. So that's how, um, or I guess it wasn't Canada, or she crossed the state line. I can't remember ex the geography exactly. But anyway, the, the fact that she crossed these particular tracks was how they were able to bring in the FBI to uh, help with the investigation because uh, it uh, kind of crossed into bigger territory than just being a local crime. And of course we have an owl there. And then we've got the Double R Diner. Very nice. And got the disc there. I don't know there's, is there much under this? Oh, cup of coffee. Ha <laughs> ha, there you go. Cup of, damn fine cup of coffee. Excellent, so there we go. And then we'll uh, carry on here. So we've got the, uh, the deer head, which I think is, uh, is in the Great Northern there. And then we've got, uh, one-eyed jacks, of course. Very nice. And carrying on. Got a slice of delicious cherry pie. Very nice. And then here we've got... Uh, I think... Uh, sorry, let me just take a look at that here. Oh, it's the Roadhouse. Duh. Yeah, so I just... <laughs> I would recognize it better at night. <laughs> so we usually saw the Roadhouse at night. Sort of where everybody would go at the end of the day to unwind and get in fights. Ah, and here we go. Here's the uh, the cave drawing, the hieroglyphics, basically, which provided the the uh, um, 
the location of the entrance to the Black Lodge. We've got here the circle of uh, sycamore trees. we got the man from another place. we got the giant um, and a whole bunch of other stuff there. I can't remember what everything is. But, uh, but basically, it's, it's indicating where to find the entrance and when it will be open. So that's pretty important stuff. And we've got a pile of donuts, of course. So very nice. And here we got. Did I miss a page? No. Okay. And then we got the uh, the Bang Bang Bar. There we go. And then we've got one of the uh, corridors in the red room in the Black Lodge. There, the one with the armless statue. It's very cool. And of course, the man from another place also known as the arm. A lot of people don't realize this. Man, uh, the man from the, uh, another place is actually the one-armed man's arm. Because remember, he cut off his arm because he couldn't stand the killing anymore with Bob. There it is. There's the entrance to the Black Lodge. So you got the, the circle of sycamore trees and the, uh, the pool of, of black oil. And, that, and then with the curtains there, that indicates that the gateway is open. So you can get in, but you might not be able to get out, as, uh, of course, Cooper learns. And there we go. And then we have, I forget what this, I forget what that actually signifies. Too many symbols to keep track of. <laughs> I'm sure one of you hardcore fans will fill me in. What does the number six and the 24810 mean? And then here we get into the extras. Now, this is where I should mention, this is the original Blu-ray release of Twin Peaks, uh, the complete, or the entire mystery, uh, which is the 10-disc set. So the 10-disc set has way more special features. You get a 10th disc of additional material here. Um, whereas there is a, a lower cost 9-disc uh, set, which uh, basically omits that last disc. So you still get all of the content, like the, the show, and uh, you get the movie, you get the missing pieces, and all that good stuff. But, um, but you're missing that 10th disc of special features. And then here we've got, of course, the, the blue rose, as it appeared on Lil's lapel. And there we go. We got Cooper and Laura Palmer in the Black Lodge. That's just a heartbreaking scene, by the way, where uh, she, she appears in the Black Lodge and shortly after she's killed, and, uh, and Cooper kind of comforts her. Uh, and then there we go. We've got the uh, the angel painting from uh, from Laura's room. Very cool. Uh, a lot of fans are kind of divided on Firewalk with me. I actually always really liked it. Um, I, I never really had an issue with it. It's definitely tonally different than the movie or than the show, but uh, but I never had a problem with that. So we got more of the mound of dirt there. And then here finally we have the train car, the actual scene of the murder. So if you can get it, definitely go with the 10-disc version just because it's got way more stuff. Now, I was going to mention, uh, for the most part, this has everything that was in the gold box set. The gold box set does have a few more things, though. Um, it's basically got, well, I shouldn't say more. It's different. There was a series of uh, coffee commercials featuring Cooper and uh, some of the other characters. Those are included in the gold box set. For whatever reason, they are not in this set. So, I mean, Twin Peaks and coffee, come on. Um... And then there's uh, the, what was it? What was it called again? The um, A Slice of Lynch, yeah. One thing that's cool about this is we get A Slice of Lynch uh, in extended form. So we actually get more of the discussion that he had with uh, Kyle MacLachlan and um, uh, Makin Amik. So very, very cool to, uh, to have that because uh, that was actually probably my favorite extra off of the... Um, uh, off the gold box set was that uh, there it actually goes there you can see because of the slight discoloration I don't know yeah you can see that there we go so we put that there because that's how it matches up with that and there we go close it up and we're all sealed and ready for archiving so yeah so slice of lynch uh, lots of uh, you get a, an extended version of that on here which is very nice and then otherwise i think all the extras are pretty much the same um i should mention also uh the uh i mentioned that there was some earlier dvd releases uh the season one standalone set that was released like 
15 years ago. Um, it only contains episodes 1 through 7, like the regular hour-long episodes of the first season. It does not include the pilot, as I mentioned before. Um, however, one of the cool things about it is it does have some extras on it, including commentary tracks for all seven episodes. Uh, those commentaries have never been made available outside of that season one set, so that is literally the only way you can get those commentaries. So uh, I'm thinking of picking up that set just to get those and have a little bit more behind-the-scenes info. Because honestly, a show like this, I, I just devour the behind-the-scenes info and the creative uh, process, and uh, it's just amazing, fascinating stuff to me. Um, then the Season 2 set, I don't think it has any commentaries, but it does have some additional extras which are not available on here. Uh, Ditto, the standalone DVD release of Fire Walk With Me, has some additional extras. It has a really poorly edited uh, featurette that uh, uh, interviews the, the character, uh, uh, many of the actors and whatnot. Um, it's great interview material, but it's it's just terribly put together. I was really disappointed, especially when you look at just how artful the series and the movie are. Um, it, it was really disappointing to see how poorly edited that featurette was. Uh, but anyway, that's nowhere to be seen on any of these. So if you want to be truly complete, you basically want these for the definitive presentations of the show. This one especially. Um, I should mention also, by the way, they went back to the original film elements for as much as they possibly could. But there was a few shots here and there that uh, they just, I guess, did not have all of the uh, original elements for, so they're up-converted uh, shots, which is unfortunate. But um, those are few and far between. Uh, for the va vast majority of it, the Blu-rays look absolutely amazing, and the show has never looked or sounded anywhere near this good. It's just fantastic. Truly the definitive presentation, and as good as it's ever going to get for this uh, amazing, amazing series. But, you know, fans of pretty much every major fandom out there are no strangers to double dipping, so if you want everything, you need these for the definitive presentations of the show, and you need the old uh, DVD releases as well uh, to have truly all of the extras. And there you have it. So, needless to say, both very, very deluxe sets. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, don't be afraid to double dip because you get goodies on each one that the other doesn't have. Um, and also, as I mentioned, make sure you get, uh, if you can get it, uh, get the 10-disc version of the entire mystery set rather than the 9-disc version. Because the 9-disc version, you're missing a lot of extras. And um, some good stuff. Uh, some great stuff on there. So... Uh, definitely worth checking out. Um, as most of you probably know by now, I am, of course, watching the new series. Um, I'm not going to miss an episode. I will not miss episode three, I promise. Um, but, uh, yeah, basically watching it as it airs. It's being shown here in Canada on the Movie Network because we don't actually get Showtime in Canada. So a lot of Showtime shows are licensed out to either Super Channel or the Movie Network here, which are the two big pay stations. I have subscriptions to both of them. So, uh, yeah, I will be watching those as they come out. And uh, a lot of you seem to be enjoying the live reaction video I did for Episodes 1 and 2 and have requested that I do more. So I will do the entire freaking series as reaction videos. They're a bit of a pain to edit, to be honest, because there's a lot of, a lot of trims and cuts I need to do to kind of cut them down to just the reactions and not just me staring blankly at the screen like a zombie. Um... But hey, I'm, I'm willing to do that for you guys because you're awesome and uh, I, I appreciate you watching. Alrighty, well that is it for this uh, closer look. Um, I do have more closer looks kind of in the works, uh, looking to put them back on Sundays where they their, their home usually is. Um, I just decided to toss this one up impromptu because uh, I've been putting it off so long and I really wanted to have it up during the uh, premiere week for the new series. So, hope you enjoyed. All right, we'll see you next time. So, quick thanks to you for watching and to my Patreon sponsors for being Patreon sponsors. Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate the support. And uh, we'll see you next time. So, until then, sayonara.